Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, I will take a look at the Blender um, closed simulations. Um, I haven't really touched much of the Blender physics. Uh, I I only like uh, touching like uh, the basic one, but I'm I've started to get uh, to have interest in uh, things like soft body and cloth and. Uh, Kind of a, uh, we'll try to use animation nodes or sphere chalk to, to use it in the, in order to set up the cloth, for example, or the soft body. Um, so this is gonna be, I will be like, uh, kind of just test it out. Um, let's say we want to create like a, kind of like a spider web. Um, so I have that's what a. I have in mind um, spider web and this is gonna be cloth simulations um, the basic of cloth uh, what I know is uh, if we have like a grid and the grid is made up of 9 by 9 vertices so if I display all the vertices it looks like this and if we apply this uh, cloth simulations um, it's supposed to fall right away because it's become like a cloth um, what I'm interested in um, today is actually the pinning the pinning options here's uh, by default there is nothing there but if we go into like the weight painting and then start painting the weight like that go back to object mode now we have the group vertex group and this is something that I'm interested to do using spread chalk so, so yeah normally you can do you you paint it out in uh, not edit mode the weight paint mode and you know you can do whatever and then and then when we play back so that's it it's a uh, really basic but I kind of wanna um, try to think of doing the weighting using sphere chalk um, and this is for the, the spider web kind of thing um, if I you know that in blender even um, the close simulation will work on on polygon edges if I let's say delete all the f um, all the faces and back to object mode you see it's still working so it's kind of cool um, and cloth simulations is slightly more advanced than the soft body simulations um, soft, soft body also similar to cloth but soft body is much simpler you just basically apply a weighting and with soft body you can do like a vertex uh, it's not like a pinning but it's more like a weighting and soft body have a like something like a goal kind of system uh, anyway in this case I will just use the cloth simulations so I will delete everything and let's jump into spread chalk and create our spider web to create spider web um, basically if you if someone asks you to draw a spider web you probably okay you start drawing something like this and then you know something like that and you know what this looks like it's actually it's actually can be based on a cylinder so let's create a cylinder by default cylinder will create cylinder so nothing so special about that except that this is a uh, super procedural and nice we can change this at any time more subdivision or less subdivisions but if I um, turn this into edges edges only now we started to see okay we can see the wireframe if I make the radius top larger and radius bottom smaller and then make the height zero I have something that looks like a spider web except that maybe 
we don't need the outer edges we kind of wanna wanna delete the those edges so how do we do that uh, spreadshot actually give you access to that quite uh, quite easily it's a it's kind of um, sometimes it feels kind of magical so the thing is it's, it's like this um, if we use a fewer index and I take a look at the number so I want to teach you like uh, to start looking at the like the number here um I just I need to plug in the vertices as well I think we are looking at the edges let me check real quick ah oh, there you go there you go um, we don't need the vertices oh actually we need we need the vertices and then we can see the edges that we don't want um, uh, is the edges between 56 and 69 so that's the that's the index number of the edges as a list because really here we have the vertices and we have the edges and they are just bunch of uh, lists of indices so with edges if we check the data it says okay connect vertices 0 and 1 and then connect the next one connects vertices 1 and 2 and then you get create more edges and let's check how many edges it has list length let's check it out um, another stethoscope we have 126 edges at the moment for this setup so for this one we we kind of want to delete or um, maybe we can mask it or we can slice the index list slice I think we'll do it we'll do the job let's uh, have a look if I plug in the edges in there and then and then plug in the slice in there now let me hide this view index and I'm starting to check okay currently I think the level is wrong I need to use level level 1 and then I'll increase the number and you can see it's starting to kind of create recreate our web um, edges by edges in the list until it's a uh, until it creates the whole web again now with the list slice imagine if you have like a bunch of uh, edge indices like this and so on until the last indices we kind of uh, with list slice we can kind of okay grab some range and then delete that part or grab some range and then delete the rest so you can do that kind of thing quite easily um, it's pretty basic but I still find this handy um, so I wanna delete the indices number let's check it again okay the list indices that I want to delete should be between 59 and actually 56 56 and 69 so 56 and 69 oh, okay um, kind of almost correct ah, okay I'm missing one so it should be between 56 and 70 because 70 is not counted for it so I managed to get the indices um, of the age that's outside I can reverse it just use the other which means now I just get the inside of the age which is uh, what we want yeah so there you go um, if you want to make it to make this always work yes there must be like some kind of pattern or mathematical pattern that's uh, so that's 
whenever we are changing the vertices or changing the subdivisions, we 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 always get the most outer of the web. Uh, but for now, we just leave it like this. Um, actually, I will also check the index um, of this guy. Um, in here, I'm checking the index for the the waiting. Um, okay, now if I bake it, I basically get this uh, very uh, generic looking spider web. It doesn't have the inside unless I make that smaller. So that's slightly more like a web uh, spider web. Bake it again. So I get something like this. Okay, um, now. I want to turn this into a cloth. Turn on cloth and then if I play back it will fall because of the graffiti. But I kind of wanna do the pinning using spare chalk. Um, if you want to do the weighting, weight pen, um, the weight pen paint I don't think it works on a, something like this. Um, I can give it a try. We put I don't think it's uh, really working. Now let's go back and then have a look. Turn on pinning. See, it doesn't it doesn't work. It only works if we have a polygon face. And in order to do this uh, manually, I can uh, we can kind of select this point and then go to the the weighting and then um, turn on vertex group and then assign it to currently select it. And then go back to object mode and then go back to cloth spinning and then so we have it that's how we do it if we if we we cannot really paint it unless we have a polygon face but i i want to do this um using spare chalk so let's have a look how we can do that i will delete this uh, group so we have a uh, we don't have the vertex groups again uh I, w I want to do it using spare chalk. So in spare chalk, we have vertex group. This is probably still like a better, better kind of nodes, but it's still still usable. And this node might kind of uh, grow or or become more sophisticated over time, depending on the need of the the user, of course. So this these things takes an object only. It doesn't have takes uh, many many objects so a single polygon mesh it will we can kind of specify okay that's the objects and then it will auto generate the vertex group which is a sv vertex group and then here we have vertex index and the weighting which index number you want to add weighting to so let's see um, the number of vertices doesn't change from from the original cylinder, so we we can just have a look here. The number should be between fifty six and sixty nine, fifty six and sixty nine. So it's the same as this guy. So fifty six and seventy actually. Fifty six and seventy. That should be the the range integer that we want. So start at 56, stop at 70, plug this into the vertex index indices and then the weighting should be 1 for all of these vertices. And now, lo and behold, playback. Oh, still not working. Why? Because I forgot. have to specify it here in the pinning. Now if everything works, we have the web. Spider web, uh, spider web working. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's actually that simple. Um, the cool thing about the uh, Blender cloth simulation is that it's actually kind of updating um, while caching. 
by default the plot cache only works from 1 to 250 so make it 500 now if I play back and then if I kind of turning off the waiting one by one you see we get that effects kind of like a it's being unpinned until the last pin and then it, it just fell down so that's really cool that's a uh, that's gonna work for us we can also kind of pinning it back and it's live and let's see what else we can do here rubber cotton let's try silk and then increasing this uh, the weighting of the vertices for the pinning if I reduce the, the weighting it will it will fall um, let's see so if I keep reducing it so it's a uh, under 0.3 and start to kind of wobble kind of goes back up I thought that's kind of uh, really really handy. I will save this and then maybe here I will play around with this um, float, maybe time frame. Well, oh, yeah, it crashes. Uh, I will reopen Blender real quick. What I found is uh, with the cloth simulation, since it works for edges, you can you can use cloth simulation for things like grass, I think. So yeah, we are up to here. Um, maybe I shouldn't play around with the number, but we can use the. So this one generate the web. This one do the weighting for a cloth. Uh, we can do one more thing just uh, select this guy object in and then use the poly frame poly uh, polyline viewer this one will generate a curve for it select oh it's generating it over there um, turn on post modifier so it's gonna get calculated for after the modifier the cloth simulation is a modifier in blender so we have that and turn off Oh yeah, of course. In this case, uh, <laughs> we only get this shape because the spline, the spline needs to be separated. I think. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So polyline viewer might not be the best. If we use a skin, skin measure, maybe a little bit more advanced for the seeds and edges. Make a life modifier, radius of 0 0.05. We have something that looks like a web. That's a bit better. Skin, I found that skin modifier is uh, the late in latest version. This thing is really really fast. It's pretty amazing. Um, make it smooth shading. On. Turn on math cap. 
and now we have spiderweb so that's uh, one way you can solidify the spiderweb and like I said the effect is live so we can kind of reduce this one by one and then see the web kind of turning off one by one okay so yeah that's the spider web example as a bonus I might actually I might do another similar example but using just a line just to be very very clear so I will delete everything start from fresh I'll create, I'll create a line here and then uh, use a viewer draw and let's make like uh, 50 50 lines and just the edges so that's 50 lines now let's see if we if I create a um, clause simulations of course the line will fall and then we're gonna do the same thing so I will I will bake the line now we have this line over here and I will bring it back and use the group vertex group waiting get our line get the waiting and then start adding weight I have only started um, experimenting with this um, today so it's still kind of a, a test we can um, actually use a formula I've shown you this um, it, in one of the live noting previously you can actually specify the index maybe index number 0, index number 10 and 20 we want to add weighting so we can do it like this and then if I select the line and then add Close simulations and then specify the pinning, the pinning special vertex group, playback simulations. You see, it's actually working. Uh, we we get that effects. Maybe I can reduce the structure so I get more like that kind of curve bending. I can change this uh, just randomly and kind of interactive. So now it's a pinning index 0, 15, 30, and we don't have 60, we have maybe 40. See, um, but it stops at frame 250. I need to increase this cache. Let's save this. This is uh, also close simulations with the help of Svechok. If we want to make like make a pinning every few index, we can do that easily. Instead of using formula, we use something like in integer range, range integer, and let's make a pattern. You know, like a you see, this is the default start, stop, zero to ten. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we turn on the stepping, we can have something that's a uh, kind of skipping. We, uh, we can do it like this, or we can use count. So range or count. We can use count. Start at 0, do it 10 times. So it's going to generate something like this. And we can use this as the vertex index so now if we check we get something like that so maybe every every 10 do it for four times and then re refresh reset our simulation so we have one two um one two three four four pin five six so six pin for our line Okay, so that's a that's for that kind of really simple line. What if instead of a, that's a simple line, what if we use a random? 
random vector and make like 100 100 of points to make a line and we use UV connection and let's have a look and we have something like like that kind of like a jumble up and even more crazy we can further randomize the input vertices and we have even more random lines okay um, let's make it like 200 and for even crazier we can use vector interpolation and use range here range float between 0 and 1 make count 100 or more so maybe this is 100 and see we are starting to kind of resembling the line and this is good for our simulations we're gonna create like a random pinning as well for these guys let's bake it and let's grab it delete and just get that thing and then do the weighting once again but make sure we have cloth simulation on specify the vertex weight and start simulating and we have this thing calculating maybe the cache maybe we should turn this off so it doesn't do the calculation actually just delete this guy and just focus on this guy let's make like 20 of these and calculate seems to be yeah it's doing the job I don't know how many vertices we have here maybe not enough make a 40 pin and then stepping every 12 play back yeah you see it's a kind of effects that I want kind of like a thread being pin and it's a this can look really really natural if we uh, if we further tweak it how many of points do we have here maybe not we don't have enough pinning 647 okay 647 Maybe we can have pin every eight and then six hundred forty eight hundred or eighty and turn off stethoscope switch to three D view full turn on actually back to compositing. Because this is a single line, we can use the poly line viewer. So grab objects in, get selection, plug this in. We have our curve. Maybe sometimes in CG, if you have small number, it looks more detailed and it's kind of nicer. Ah, this should be on. Okay, uh, let's put this in layer number two and switch to 3D view. Go to layer number two. Turn on matcap and playback. Maybe this is can can be can be used for like a horror like a horror environment decorations 
maybe the pinning um, what would be nice maybe to improve this maybe if we, each of the lines is actually separate and sometimes you do kind of cut cut the lines and you're gonna have like more detail it's gonna look more natural yeah, let me stop that and then this is a curve so I can just duplicate it and then turn it into convert it into mesh and if we apply like displacement and something like maybe like cloud maybe maybe we have something that's more kind of creepy looking so it's more random Yeah, just some of the ideas make this more uh, kind of transparent maybe so that's kind of like more generic like a generic lines what's cool about this is if we go to back to compositing you can turn it into beast line so you have like a smooth smooth curve um, view select it so back to this guy Uh, that might look all right if we use something like wireframe. Yeah, it looks pretty fancy. Just add like a subdivision or smooth it. Maybe smooth. Do it like couple of time apply make it very thin so we have that kind of a uh, abstract looking kind of structure yeah so so yeah that's um, just uh, like a quick exploration of Blender cloth simulations using Spreadshop. Um, I'm focusing basically on the just the vertex weighting using a kind of procedural kind of way. It's all numerical. Um, I do kind of wish that uh, maybe at some point we can we can use like a like a texture to do this, like a any kind of texture. We just apply it and then transfer all the the weighting of the texture into the objects itself so that way really um, painting it being able to paint it is a uh, kind of nicer than doing the numbering like uh, like this some um, it, it really depends sometimes you you want to do it numeric numerically so you, you can see the pattern and then okay you can you can kind of uh, use the math formula to get everything to kind of work correctly if there is a pattern if there is no pattern if everything is more random you rather use a kind of like a texture and for that you maybe need to use UV um, it's not I don't know it's a question mark but like I said if you want to make this um, kind of this kind of shape you know like a random it will be nice if you just have a lot of edges and then resample all the edges and then turn it into kind of a spider webby kind of structure yeah so that's pretty much what i want to show you in this live noting um thanks again for tuning in and if you have any question you can leave any comments um i'll see you in the next video thank you very much